Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will assemble the PCs for Ike and Matthias. Both of them will be mounted inside Corsair 7000D and 7000X RGB series cases, which I never tested so far. I just did a review for the Corsair Germany YouTube channel, just reviewing the case in general, showing what kind of features they offer, but I didn't do any builds in those systems yet. We're going to have to two different builds because one, one is the 7000D Airflow. In the 7000D Airflow we're going to do a custom water cooling build simply because it offers the best cooling performance um, with the open front. So we will use this setup which is for Matthias and we will try to fit three 360 radiators in there. Probably maybe only two. I also have three slim ones and two, uh, one thick one from the Corsair radiator series. So we will try to figure out what kind of um, radiator configuration would be best for him. And for IK, we're going to use this H170i Elite Capelix AIO, which, which I also didn't test so far personally. So that's pretty much a perfect opportunity to have two very similar systems because both of the um, bundles are AMD based. Both are with uh, 5900X CPUs, which was quite fortunate. So we just have um, similar setups. One will be AIO cooled with the, 100, with the H170i and the other one will be custom water cooled. For the AIO cooled system, this um, Commander Pro, like light version, not sure what it's called exactly, is also included in the H170i series AIO, which is quite cool. So you can hook up the six fans directly to this one and, well, three fans and you can hook up six in total which is pretty much perfect because we will use six fans in total for the case. So we can hook that up directly to there. All right, let's start. First of all, this mainboard looks extremely lost inside the 7000D. This is the X version, 7000 uh, X RGB. The main difference is front and side panels. On the D we have um, the mesh front and side for the airflow version and right here in the RGB version we have the front and uh, also side glass panels and in the front as you can see you can spot three 140 millimeter RGB fans which are already equipped when you buy the case and you have an additional rear fan also 140 millimeter and I fitted the H170i for 20 AIO also already in top I have to say just visually it would look a lot better, I think, if those fans would be the same as this one. But I just couldn't find the same model type available. Yeah, maybe have to swap them to QL fans. I found white QL fans available for shipping, but not this type of fan. Yeah, might have to swap this before I ship this over to IK. But for our today's test, just to test the case itself, this should be fine. But yeah, there is just so much space in this case. I mean, look at the room right here. It's really empty. Feature-wise, there's also this cover right here, which is made of plastic, which you can swap to this part. Depending on what kind of cooling configuration you will put in front, maybe you will have a thick radiator in front, you will have to remove this, and then you have this thing right here, which you can see is made of different pieces. So you can break out those parts, depending on how much space, what kind of like fan radiator configuration you're using in the front. That is also a quite nice gimmick. There's a window in here, so if you have a PSU sitting inside which has this like wattage meter included, you could see this in here. And you could also obviously mount your uh, GPU vertically. I don't have the kit right here for this, so we will just mount it horizontally in a normal configuration, but theoretically it would be possible. Okay, it's time for cable management. And I absolutely hate cable management. So actually that's great, because there is this additional, like, I don't know, cover where you can hide everything underneath. So if this would be my PC, I would probably just throw all the cables inside and close the door and uh, be done. But um, since this is not my PC, since this is going to be the PC of iCam, then yeah, spending a bit more time making this as tidy as possible. And I'm pretty much done also with the cable management, just missing the main PSU cables, which won't be that much of an issue. But as you can see, I have two Corsair Commanders already sitting in there. This is the one which is coming with the case itself, with the 7000 X RGB and that's also one of the main differences to the D version because the D does not come with the, with the additional commander. The commander is also equipped with two temperature sensors, one hanging off the right. I removed the one on the left because we're not using that one. But a commander will just sit in there the way you can see it right now, already 
um, routed to the cables in front. But a commander comes like this, just sitting inside the case, already connected to the cables, which are connected to the white fans in the front. And then I hooked up the second commander to this one. So there is this like USB adapter, splitter, whatever, where you can hook up this commander to that one. So you're actually only wasting one internal USB 2.0, which is great. And yeah, so that one is one of the H170i. So controlling the three fans of the AIO. And this Corsair Commander is controlling the four other fans. And considering how much we threw already inside the case, I think it looks quite tidy. Only the main PSU cables are missing. So 24 pin for the main board, the EPS and for the VGA, also for the SSDs. But that's it. There's not much missing and yeah, looks quite tidy. Even after adding the rest of the cables for power, I think it's still fine. I mean, it looks messy, especially in the area down there, but that's just how it is. I mean, you have 24 pin cable, 8 pin uh, PCI Express cable, SATA cables for the SSDs and everything, especially the 8 pin EPS cable that goes to the CPU. Yeah, but in the end, I'm just going to close it. Should be fine. But I have to say, I'm very pleased with the result. Even considering that I'm not using pure white components, also not having the white fans on top, but I also changed the cover on the AIO. I think it's a quite nice result. Of course, she also has to check out if everything was built correctly, if we did a good job for IK, but seems like she's fine with it. But I also have to point out that if I was going to build a system in there, I would probably go for custom water cooling and not only AIO, because for AIO cooling, I mean, look how much unused space there is on the right. So I would probably go for a smaller case, but then also if you would want to go for a 420 AIO, then there are not that many cases that can fit such massive AIOs. <laughs> yeah, so the system looks good. Very satisfied, very pleased with the result. Also, judging from our AIO build, I couldn't find any like issues with the 7000X RGB series, but I also didn't expect to encounter any kind of issues just for a simple AIO build. I think the issues you could probably encounter are just for custom water cooling, Luckily, we're going to build that for the next system. Let's go. Time to talk about the airflow version. As you can see, it's equipped with 140 millimeter fans, two in the front and one additional fan in the back, which I already removed. And I was just in the process of also removing those two, but then I noticed that if I want to remove the two fans, I also have to remove this bracket, which I want to remove anyway. So it's not that much of an issue for me right now, but if you would just want to remove the bracket for whatever reason to add, I don't know, additional fans or whatever, you have to remove the fans first because the cables are going in the back, like through the, the cover. So you have to remove the cover first to be able to remove the fans. And first I thought I maybe just remove the cover first to be able to access the screws easier. Well, anyway, it's not that big of an issue. Uh, what we want to do is Obviously, we want to finally build a custom water cooling loop system inside this case. But first, I also want to check out what kind of radiator placement options we have. So, so of course, there's advertising this with a 420 ra radiator in the front and also 420 radiator on top. If you use 120 millimeter fans, they advertise this with using three 360 radiators simultaneously. So one in top, one in the back, one in the front. They also advertise that you can use 480 radiators in the front and in the back, but I'm not sure how this will work out when you want to use them simultaneously. And I also don't have the 480 ra radiators right now, so I cannot check that. But we will check it with 360 reds. For the easier build process, I removed the glass panel on the other side. So in result, if you open this, the case starts flipping. So if you want to remove one side, you also have to remove the other side, which is not that much of an issue. Talking about issues. So that's the cover I talked about before. So if you want to remove this, you can see there's this cable from the fan going through. And if you want to remove the cable, the cable is attached with a zip tie to the rest of these cables, like 
up in the corner right here, which is a bit annoying because you have to cut this, but I cannot really access this with pliers, so we'll have to cut this with a knife and there's always a risk of like hitting through a different cable and that, that's, not, that's not a great solution. I was playing around with radiator configurations a little bit. As you can see, I put a thicker 360 in the front, a slimmer 360 in the back, which is not really ideal, especially from like aesthetical point of view. I think it won't look that nice if the front radiator is covering half of the radiator of the back. It's not going to look that nice. For the fans of this radiator, there's sufficient amount of space in the front, which also will make the front look nicer if you have the fans, like RGB fans, shining through the front probably makes most sense to have this kind of configuration and attach the fans uh, from the front. For the test, I put a 420 radiator in top, which seems to fit very nice. Obviously, you could swap this from the direction to have the uh, fittings point out on the left, but then you have to keep in mind it might collide with your, I don't know, radiator fan combination underneath here. I think it's quite unlikely that you will have radiators sitting here, but um, your mainboard will also sit here, so we'll, you would have to test if this could collide. From the radiator configuration in the front, that is probably the most you could make out of like a 360-420 combination, even though it wouldn't look nice, I think. If you would move to 480 radiators for front and side, uh, you would have to be careful because it would block your fittings right here, which would mean you would have to flip this again. Yeah, not sure about that. And also you have to keep in mind that you still have to add the fans for the top radiators. So 480 radiators, probably not really a choice for this case. And uh, we will go for dual 420, which I think is also going to be the perfect radiator combination for this case. So Sheik is almost done building the PC. Uh, she added the 420 radiator on top, 420 radiator in the front. It's a beautiful front intake. This will be very good cooling wise. And uh, then we have the three 140 millimeter fans sitting in front of this radiator. We have the XT5 pump reservoir combination right here. And this tube right here, which looks like it's bent in a weird way or maybe or it looks like it would be too long. The reason I chose this is because we can use the original cover and hide all the cables and everything just underneath. This will make the system look very clean right in the end. And tubing wise, we will start from the pump, go into the CPU cooling block and into the top 420 radiator. And you can see there is also a second connector right here. And this tube goes all the way down on the back. And yeah, the, the tubing can fit right through here, which is actually quite nice. It goes all the way down there. Let, let's not talk about this. Let's just... Yeah, it goes down here and all the way to the front radiator. And there is also a temperature sensor right here, which will go up to the Commander Pro. And I finally figured out what this door is for. So we can close this and never talk about all this cable management again. Let's just talk about the front. Instead, front looks so much nicer, or a side, depending on your perspective. But yeah, very happy with the result. And it was also a pleasure building the PC inside the 7000D uh, airflow. Worked out nicely. There was only the zip tie thing, which I was complaining about in the beginning, but that's like, yeah, complaining about something that's not even really worth talking about, to be honest. It's just a very, very tiny detail apart from that. It's a very good case for building custom water cooling. You have a ton of space, good features. It was very, very easy to build everyth everything inside there. And yeah, would definitely build custom water cooling loops inside this uh, case again. Time to fill up the loop and finally check out the result. All right, just taking a nap casually. By the way, shout out and massive thanks uh, to Seagate for supporting this project as well. First of all, thanks for giving us the feedback when back then we opened the 2.5 inch tiny HDD, which Matthias was using, the one which eventually broke. Um, and they sent this Iron Wolf NAS 4 terabyte HDD as a replacement for him, so he can use this one for his backups in the future.
I'm currently a big fan of the combination using the EK torque fittings in the titanium version with the EK black soft tubing. You don't always have to go for hard tubing. This can also look very, very high quality, much easier to build and without hard tubing it gives Matthias an easier chance to simply hook up his GPU in future also to the custom water cooling loop, which should be no issue. Talking about radiator surface, two 420 radiators should be absolutely sufficient, cooling the AMD CPU and also the GPU in future if he wants to. And talking about the Corsair 7000 series, Right now in Germany the availability is not that great yet. The 7000D comes at about 250 euro and the 7000X RGB at about 310 to 330. Availability should be better within the next days and weeks. But in general it's an absolutely good case. Can absolutely recommend this for custom water cooling builds. Not many things I would criticize. Enjoy building in them and yeah, should be a good uh, case for the future for future custom water cooling builds. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.